Hello, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer with MattPfeifferCoach.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I create videos and content about toxic, narcissistically abusive relationships. And if you have a question, you can send it to JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoach.com. Again, that is JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoach.com. Just give me several days to get back to it. And also make sure that you keep that email two to three paragraphs max. And you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. If it's too long, if it's too lengthy, unfortunately, I will not be able to get to it. Also, make sure you hit the like notification and you hit the bell notification and the subscribe notification so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. I upload new videos on this channel five days a week, Monday through Friday. With all that being said, let's get into today's email. So today's email comes from a person who is struggling with an avoidant attachment style after experiencing a, a narcissistic parent and an enabling parent, but also a neglectful um, was neglected emotionally. And if, for those of you who are aware of attachment styles, you know that has the potential of leading to an avoidant attachment style where you feel, uh, where you begin to get closed off, uh, especially after you may have experienced a toxic relationship in adulthood. And uh, so then you don't feel comfortable opening up, right? And so you, you now become emotionally unavailable. And some people, when they don't recognize this behavior, they don't recognize this pattern, or sometimes they actually begin to make excuses for it because they think that they're protecting themselves. But in all actuality, it actually makes them more vulnerable to get into another toxic relationship and it makes them more susceptible to stay in that toxic relationship longer. So let's talk about this. Uh, this situation. Let's read this email and let's break this down for her. So this email reads, Hi Matt, my question is, is about dismissive avoidant attachment styles in relationships and narcissistic parents. It's two parts, but both are related to one another. I'm a 32 year old female and began therapy around 22. Very, very, very good. Uh, after my dad cheated on my mom and my boyfriend cheated on me at the same time. I'm sorry to hear that. That that leads to a lot of trauma and a lot of grief at the fact that you, you were experiencing but you also experienced it from your parents as well. Uh, after years of therapy and a couple of narcissistic abusive relationships later, I've learned that the trauma of having a narcissistic dad and a mom who was not affectionate was the root of my avoidant attachment style. Not just that, but also the toxic relationships that you're in, the narcissistic relationships that you're in, likely enhance that as well. So I've been doing the work to to move past those childhood issues that led me to, to abusive relationships, and I'm ready to date and have a secure, healthy relationship. However, does someone ever really change their attachment style? I'm single and dating and have let partners know about my attachment style, and I'm working through it and have and have healthier attachment, but my dad still has a manipulative and abusive ways about him. And my mom is still unable to show emotion or affection towards me. Uh, I can't escape those relationships, but I can personally, um, can I personally ever get to a secure attachment style? Would love your insight. So uh, the answer to that, short answer to that is yes, 100% that your attachment style can change and it can develop. However, we have to be very aware of your avoidant attachment style. We have to know right, what the patterns of avoidant attachment style look like. We, you may hear me talk quite often about putting the puzzle pieces back together, right? of understanding what the avoidant attachment style looks like, what the behavior looks like, but then also right, what that what the secure attachment style looks like because for you it may not come natural at least in the beginning but it's important for you to be very very intentional now with all of that being said right what happens when uh, when someone is working on their attachment style your first instinct right your first reaction my, when when shit hits the fan when things when there's big emotions or when there's a fight or when you, uh, let's say that you, you meet someone that's healthy uh, and you guys have a disagreement, your first reaction might be to avoid, right? Might be to walk away. And this is where it's important for us to be very, very intentional. And I tell people to be very proactive. 
to talk to people about, you know, it's you, you're going to need space, right? You're going to know where your limits lie and you're going to know how to balance out the, that fact that you need space whenever there's arguments and when to come back so you're not too avoidant. Where's that balance, right? Because a part of you is naturally going to want to uh, to kind of work through issues on your own and to kind of be thoughtful and uh, and have your space. And that's completely OK. Right. But it's important to begin to find the balance. Right. That's what we're looking for. And so what I tell people who struggle with any sort of insecure attachment style is to proactively have the conversations with your partner the way that you're the way that you're talking about but not just the not just this willy-nilly i have an anxious attachment style or i have an avoidant attachment style but what does that mean right what does that look like to your partner right and you need to have discussions right i tell people to be proactive about your arguments be proactive about your fights because what happens is that too often people wait till shit hits the fan Right. When you are when when both people are emotional, we have to remember that even in a healthy relationship, there's going to be disagreements. Healthy relationships require disagreements. It's about how are we going to work through those things. Right. So if you need some time and some space to kind of gather your thoughts before you kind of engage into the into the conversation, into the disagreement, then this is these are the type of things that you need to have a discussion with your partner about before you get to that point. You don't, you don't want to wait till you hit the, the shit hits the fan and then you say, I need an hour to myself. I need to go th- I need to go for a walk, right? Because then because we have to understand you could meet someone who has an anxious attachment style, right? Who wants to cling and then guess what? Now we have a problem, right? Because they're going to want to cling and so when you ha- when you are able to be proactive and when you begin to learn what a secure attached person would do it's important for you to be intentional you're never going to be perfect even a secure attached person is not going to be perfect but the more that you begin to understand the more that you begin to learn the more that you continue to be intentional and the more that you're able to be to to develop right the closer that you can get to a secure attached and then also remember that some of this also falls on your partner right the reason why we want a partner that's also into self development that also is aware of, has a lot of self awareness to them because you're going to want someone that is that has those capabilities of being self aware on the other side too so thank you very much for writing in. Anyone else who would like to write in has questions for me, make sure you send it in to just ask Matt at mattfifercoach.com. Again, that is just ask Matt at mattfifercoach.com. So make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max. Be very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. If it's too long, if it's too lengthy, unfortunately, I will not be able to get to it. With all that being said, thank you very much, and I will talk to you soon.